What is up guys, it's Mr. Didi. I know you've been waiting for this video, I'm sorry. This is part 10.5 of the guide basically. So this is going to be a little break off portion where we're going to be building our RTA team, okay? So our RTA teams, I guess is a better way to put it. But these characters are gonna be usable in other content as well. But we're all gonna be building different characters depending on what you pull on your account and how you want to play. I mean, the thing is, I'm going to be showing you guys a list of things I want you to pick characters out of. And how this is going to work is I broke it down into roles. You're going to pick characters from each role, try to build up a total of 12 characters. Some of them you already have geared because you're using them for other things, which is great. And then you're going to take a lot of the characters we build and use in other things. But those of you guys that don't know the reason why I've been gone is because I did a four day account. Well, it's under four days challenge where I pushed a master RT. I started an account on Thursday, brand new. Not brand new, but I hadn't beat a stage on it yet. I just logged in for three days. So I cleared stage 1-1, the first stage of the game. And on Monday, I hit Masters RTA. So it was a four and a half day I got to Masters RTA on a brand new account. So, meaning you guys can do it. One of the reasons that this was kind of postponed is because the RTA season had just started. Okay, with the RTA season just starting, games are super hard right now. At the end of the season, the game's completely different. Whenever you go in, you'll be fighting other new newer players that don't know what they're doing. But... I fought some legend rank people throughout this, okay, on a brand new account that count was four days old. I fought a legend player that finished legend last season, and that's a top 100 player. So those of you guys that don't know, there are ranks, and I fought some of the strongest players in the game on a four day old account because of the timing that I, I played. But those of you guys getting into it, we'd say we went through a big loss streak, but we did hit masters in a, in a four day period, which was sick. Okay. but. Going into this, I want to talk about the draft. So draft order is something super important. As you see, you have your first picks and you see I have first pick here. This is going to be something I'm going to be teaching you guys. This video is going to be telling you the characters to pick and start working on. I am then going to take my other YouTube guide account. This is a different account from that. This was a brand new account I started Thursday, but I have the YouTube guide account. That account I'll be going through and following this list and upgrading gear and building on the characters. So you guys can wait and watch that with me. But I want you at least to go and get in mind a group of characters that you can use. And again, you don't have to use exactly what I have. But with this, you'll have your first pick characters. You'll have your characters you rely on. That's your normal go-to strategy. You also have bans. So you're going to have to pick a character that you want to ban. So for me, I banned Harsetti for this challenge. One, because I hadn't had a chance to fight her yet because i was been doing new player guide stuff. Two, because she creates a complete RNG scenario in almost every game you fight people with her. She's zero speed. But you'll find characters that are hard for you to fight. So maybe if you have Harsetti, you don't want to pre-ban her. My suggestions for your starting pre-bans are going to be Harsetti, if you don't have her, or ML Luna. Okay, Those are two of the strongest, most common pre-ban characters probably right now. And then eventually, once you reach your Masters RTA, you'll have two pre-bans. So you'll get two pre-bans, your opponent gets two. So a total of four characters, up to four characters, will be banned every single match that's why we need to make sure we build a good handful of characters just between the bands and only one character can be picked on rta so if i pick death the other ray see right here and Celine, my opponent cannot pick those characters so that's a really thing important thing to note that's why you need a wider roster so if your opponent takes your characters you are fine you still have other characters picked so don't go into rta too early okay so going into this we have our first pick characters we're going to pick a couple of those and we're going to have our second and third picks and there's also band protection the third pick has band protection meaning that it cannot be banned but whoever you pick in third pick band protection guaranteed makes it through the match that is another thing i'm gonna have to teach you but overall i'll go over draft order i'll go over common things you can do common first picks and i will have a whole series of me playing rt so you can watch along and i'll explain all the decisions i do but just know this is the hardest part to teach and this is the best way i can think to teach it so going in what we're going to do is we're going to look at this list okay so this list i have right here is going to be a bunch of different characters obviously you can see and with these characters i broke them into tiers okay so we have our first picks so with the first pick characters you want to make sure you have a couple different confident first picks you can do okay so with this if you come in i'm going to have a notepad here that we're going to pull up this is common info or like the information i want you to follow so i'm going to go ahead and view we're going to zoom zoom in a couple times so you guys can actually read this sorry i didn't do this before the video but this is what i want you to try to figure out as you're going through this video again you can wait and watch me go through it and that may help you just see somebody else do it that's why i always do my guides this way so you can 
see somebody else do it instead of just telling you because some of you are visual learners versus just hearing something and knowing what to do. So we're going to go with two common openers. So we're going to go into this and we're going to find two openers on this that we want to use, right? So I'm going to make sure I have Death of the Ray. We can grab some damage dealers. You can grab tanks. And Abigail is one of the greatest characters ever. You're going to hear me praising her. She, her new buff is so good. But depending on which characters you have, any of these in here, try to pick at least two of them, okay? Some of the characters will be usable in multiple roles. That's one thing you're going to learn. And also, if you have a character that you want to try that isn't on here, you can try it, okay? I don't want you guys feeling like you have to play a certain way. But if you copy what I do, you'll probably have a greater success rate getting into it. And then once you're a little bit more confident and won some games, then you can start testing stuff. So for me, my first couple of characters, I'm going to have a bunch out of this, actually. We're going to have Death of the Ray. We're going to have Genua. We're going to have Bloodblade Coran. We're going to probably have Arrowell and Crimson Armin, Abigail. And then for my this account that I'm going to be doing, I technically will have a Tywin and ML Landy. And Celine is on here because if you have first pick, then you can pick whatever you want that isn't pre-banned by your opponent. If you don't have first pick, then your opponent will pick something. So say your opponent takes Death of the Ray first. That's when you can immediately respond with the Selene. And that's something that's going to be hard to teach. And you're going to have to wait and watch me do it for it to fully make sense, probably. But just go through this and try to make sure you have two first pick characters. Now we have our general damage dealer. These are characters that you can pick in pretty much every draft. And they'll work as a new player. This is for new players getting into RTA, not existing players. I'll go over all this in a little bit, but I've been playing new player accounts for years now and getting into RTA and trying new challenges, trying different characters. I've seen what works and what doesn't work better than any in-game player that I know of, at least. So these are the characters I've seen the most success rate with. Going into it, Mercedes has actually been incredible. If you go back and watch my RTA push on Twitch for this challenge I just did, Mercedes was amazing. So Amiki is a new character. You have to beat Chapter 5 to get her specially changed. But Amiki specially changed is super nice. But again, Bloodblade, Karan, Genua. I have two characters that if you're following my guide, we will all have that as Aiden and Selene. These are two fantastic characters that will just go in general damage dealer positions and be great and then midnight galilee just came out so maybe you want to grab her i did use her last night she was still fantastic for a newer player now going in these other characters maybe you got lucky and got some of them maybe you didn't it's okay but mercedes is another character that could be very useful here so with that i want you to try to get four three to four damage dealers okay maybe you can't get four yet but three to four damage dealers of that category would be great and you can try a different character maybe there's another character you think could be good in that 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 little grouping Go ahead and build them go ahead and try them. it'll be fine and the thing is i know you guys are gonna be confused on builds again wait for me to do the next video and you'll watch me go through this pick all the characters and you'll watch me craft gear and build everything that i want to do we're going to be spending conquest points to buy gear from arena shop and we're going to be doing another crafting session if you look back i did the 10k crafting session we're going to be doing another 10k now next up we have our counter pick so our counter pick i'm going to zoom in a little bit our counter pick, so if you guys want to see this a little bit increased, is what it looks like. But our counter pick characters. So these counter picks are basically just damage dealers, right? They're just damage dealers, but these are not damage dealers that you can get away with picking early. Well, I don't know why Rand's in here, to be fair. Rand is kind of a counter pick. If your opponent's going slow, then you counter and go faster. That's the idea of him, but he's not great in there. So the counter pick section was a little bit hard to do for this because some of these characters aren't great i know a lot of these characters you won't have like au karina and uh, maybe some rimuru you won't have some of these limiteds but these are the kind of characters that you wouldn't pick early in your draft generally you would go later draft on them because they're easily counterable so your opponent could pick something that beats them very easily but if you pick them late in the draft your opponent has less time to respond because they have less picks left meaning that these characters could be very very strong and at that spot but if you pick these characters early you'll probably lose the game so these early damage shows you probably pick them anywhere in your draft and they're not it's not going to make a difference mercedes may be more toward the end of the draft but most of these other ones if you pick them early you're probably going to be fine but these characters here if you pick them too early say spectre tenebria you pick her second pick your opponent will pick all aoe damage shields or characters that hit all of your board at one time which will kill your Spectre Tenebria. So Spectre Tenebria would be something you'd pick late draft so your opponent can't respond. And say, if your opponent picks single target damage, it was like a Selene. She can't attack uh, AoE, meaning that someone in stealth like Spectre Tenebria can't be hit by Selene. So that's a general idea of the fourth, fifth pick characters and being a counter pick. You're trying to pick, look at what they do, and that is something that you're going to learn through playing, okay? Next up, we have tanks. So try to pick 
a couple of counter picks, two counter pick damage dealers throughout that if you if you see any that you want. Okay. And you want to try messing with. Next up, we, we want one to two tanks, and these for, are for mitigation. Some of them you can have some damage on them, but having one, at least one tank, opens up your avenues for so many more drafts. So some of the best tanks for early players are always going to be Unbound Knight, Airwell, and Crimson Armin. Those two are fantastic. They Unbound Knight, Airwell gets Escort, and that makes it to where she has built-in Aureus, which Aureus is a four-star artifact that makes it to where anytime your other characters take damage, a percentage of the damage is transferred onto your tank. So Crimson Armin is a great character that could be used on Aureus. Now, all these other tanks here are usable, okay? Eaton, he's a three-star Moonlight character. He's fantastic. He's not like super top tier meta. You're not, I mean, you could probably use him all the way up to close to Emperor if you really wanted to, if you're playing a tank style draft. But for an early game player, he, he is an option. If they, he looks fun and you want to try to use him, just know where you're using that character and the reason you're using that character. If you see a character and just want to use it off design, try to figure out what that character is supposed to do or what it is capable of before just going and spamming it and trying to make it do what you want it to do that's the thing with characters and designs and video games they are designed to do x job when you try to make it do another job it's not going to go well for you generally i mean maybe sometimes you can come up with something fun and that's the cool part of east epic 7 is trying to come up with those cool things so next up after you pick some tanks ideally if you can get two that'd be great but just one tank would be fine next up you want one to two cleansers i would generally say you want two cleansers cleansers are pretty hard though okay that's why one of the reasons i have everyone start with destina is you'll start with a cleanser and she isn't going to be the greatest cleanser in the current meta but at least she's still a cleanser it gives you an idea of what you need and then eventually once you get these other characters that may be better in certain situations you can flex them in but early rt matches destina as a cleanser at that as being her job is amazing and another thing with what i was saying earlier you build characters for their job. So there's a character that is supposed to do X thing, but maybe they do three different things and you can specialize them to do one of those things. So Destina, she's a reviver and she's a cleanser and she can also combo readiness push with her skill too, boosting up another character on your team. So you can either decide to build her bulky and with lesser effectiveness, make her super hard to kill through damage. That is one idea. So then you can use her to revive. Another way to build Destina is make her a little bit squishier, but give her a ton of effect resistance. Having the extra effect resistance means she cannot get debuffed and she'll be able to cleanse your old team. So there are certain characters that you can kind of change a little bit as long as part of their kit is doing what you are aiming for. So that is one example of maybe a character that could do multiple things. So say a Destina on full bulk could be used as like Anticleave. Just make her impossible to kill, put her on a uh, damage mitigation artifact like Proof of Valor, a guild artifact that mitigates damage where she just is annoying to kill your opponent tries to kill your whole board they fail destiny revives and you win that's another way you could do her it just i know there's a lot of information coming out of here but whenever we get to the next video maybe some of this makes more sense so now we have our two cleansers now we have our supports the more supports you have the better support characters are everything in this game they will set up your support characters will set up your other characters to perform at a higher level so some of the common support characters we want to try to find two of them um would be abigail abigail best support character for new players i no one can convince me otherwise this character is absolutely amazing she creates it to where your backline character whenever they would die they get a immortality buff and full cleansed it, whatever debuffs they have on them whenever they get to that point of dying they would instead not die get immortality buff for a turn a healing buff to where they heal based on how much damage they do and then yeah they survive i don't know what the point of that was going to be but abigail super super good it keeps your character alive full cleanses amazing character next up we have moon bunny dom as a supporter she is technically a disrupting character as well because if your opponent has any extra turn characters it will give if they take an extra turn she'll give barrier to your team and immunity and it cleanses all debuffs super super strong into characters like death the ray knock wall moon and conquer lilies moon bunny dom counters all those characters but she's also a support character because whenever you click her skill three it gives your team a little a little barrier to keep them alive and it gives you attack buff so moon bunny dominion could be built higher speed if, if that's your goal is to get attack buff on your team and maybe win faster she pushes up your team after she uses her skill three and she's going to give you attack buff meaning you're going to do more damage so multiple ways to build her. you can build her slower on bulkiness so that you can use her to fight every or all those extra turn characters or you can build her extra fast and 
push up your team and try to win in a, a faster rate so that's a, another style support character now we have our like bulk down support character similar to abigail we have blood moon haste blood moon haste if a character dies he gets a buff that makes it where he does deals double damage on a skill three and if a skill three kills anything he revives your whole team plus when a character dies he gives your team a huge barrier and immunity but blood moon haste biggest weakness is debuffs which is what we're gonna be getting into next so these are all styles of support characters. There's a bunch more, but these are just common ones that a lot of you guys will have. Rowana gives revive buff, and whenever you get dual attacked or extra attacked, it'll push your combat readiness of your team up and heal them. So Rowana is a great support character. Lilius, great support character in the sense that she cleanses your team and she will dual attack too. Dual attacking characters are always some of the best support characters because you'll attack, it'll bring an extra character, you get more damage out of their turns. So it's a way that you can kind of make it to where your top, your damage dealers get double the damage out of their skills to an extent because they'll be attacking whenever it isn't their turn. That's the idea of support characters. Now there's way more options and way more things you could do. I don't know why this is in support. I think it's supposed to be in cleanser. I don't know what Shuna's doing here, but she's just, she's doing something. All right, next up, we have our disruptors and debuffers. This is probably the most important tier. So I put on here to pick two of them. The more you get disruptors and debuffers, it allows you to play at a lower speed. So Epic 7 is the kind of game everyone who's played in the past is always talking about speed, 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 so important. It is. Don't get me wrong. Speed is important. You want to be able to get speed. But if you don't have speed, the more disrupting characters you have, the more you can play around with not having speed, but the, also the more disrupting characters you have, a lot of the times it just benefits your speed. So disruptors and debuffers is the same tier. I want you to try to get two of them. Selene, we should all have one of the best disrupting debuffers or disruptors in the game. Your opponent clicks a non-attack skill. She's going to go almost one shot a character. And if she's on an artifact, you'll have souls. You could soul burn her skill three and she'll probably one shot almost anything in the game. As long as it's not too bulky. Selene, absolutely fantastic disrupting character it allows you to play slower but still be able to get a turn or potentially get a turn or prevent your opponent from clicking their skills that's what disruptors generally are there for is to try to prevent the opponent from clicking the skills that they want to now angel vine angelica she is a debuffer and a disruptor if she gets aoe attacked she pushes her camera up she cleanses uh, actually it's anytime an ally gets attacked that isn't her she pushes herself up meaning she gets more turns so with Angel of Angelica though, if you get AoE attack, she uses uh, her extra skill, she cleanses, so one debuff will get cleansed, and she puts up skill nullifier. So if your opponent's trying to cleave you, you pick Angel of Angelica, they try to S3 you with say Ran, then you're going to end up cleansing one of the debuffs, it's usually the stigma, because uh, Ran lands two debuffs, but it'll cleanse one and give you skill nullifier, meaning that the next time each of your characters gets hit, they take no damage. So Angel of Angelica is fantastic for slow players certainly you could play angel of angelica and it helps you survive into that moon bunny dominion i just explained her kit but she's a disruptor in terms of your opponent's trying to take extra turns they don't want to click their extra turn now because it's just going to give you a bunch of buffs and not land anything and there's a bunch of other options in here see phantom polytus is a disruptor in terms of she pushes back the opponent she debuffs she puts slow but she also makes it to where the opponent a lot of characters are disruptors just based off their passive just them existing on the board so C Phantom Polytus disrupts the opponent's gain of any kind of resource. So fighting spear or focus. So any character that has a bar that needs to get filled up to do a certain thing. If you have C Phantom Polytus on your board, always they're they're never gonna be able to use their ability. So Aria, even Green Violet, uh there's there's so many characters that have that focus and rely on focus to do anything. Uh, Abyssal Euphine, ML Landy, they get half focus gain. So it doesn't prevent focus, but she gives half focus gain, meaning that all these characters perform at close to half their original value they should. Now, Bellion makes it to where your opponent can't get souls. That's fantastic. Now, Briarwood Stare makes it to where your opponent cannot revive. That's also amazing. Sage Ball and Cezanne, every time your opponent takes a turn, he combat readiness boosts up. And then he can click his skill and sleep the entire enemy team. And strip, strip, then sleep them. But all of these would be a disrupting style of characters. These are usually the generally harder characters to build, Many of them take speed or high effect res or high damage. They take a high stat of some kind. Usually, like Elena will take pretty decent speed and effect res. But Disruptors are absolutely amazing characters. And usually, I'd say almost the backbone of your job. Now, I have a bunch of characters in here that I put in the not recommended for new players. So maybe you guys aren't too new of a player. Maybe you have some gear you just never touched Arctic. You can go in and take some of these characters and flex them in where you think they could work in. So say you want a... 
Like closer Charles could be used as a support character to an extent. You build them super fast. The faster you build closer Charles, you can make them work. There's going to be characters in here that you can maybe make work. So Astromancer Elena. Maybe you think you can use her as a disrupting character because your opponent can't counter. There's always going to be some other things you can do. But that is the general outline that I want you guys to follow. So again, I'm going to pull this up. Try to make sure you have two openers. Three to four damage dealers. Two counter pick characters. One to two tanks. One to two cleansers. Two supports and two disruptors. And it's a total of two, four, five, six, eight, eleven. It's like 12 to 15 characters. 12-ish, good enough. 12-ish total character to start. That's the goal. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to upload this video. You guys can go ahead. I'll scroll through it all again. Now I just put that. So two first picks. Try to get three to four damage dealers here. I put the names on. Okay, you're going to have to pause the video because I don't know how I can put this picture anywhere. Anytime I try to put the picture, it's on Discord and it, it goes away after a day. So I have no idea where to put this picture that you guys can actually view it at any time. Um, and plus it's going to be multiple pictures because I have to zoom in. So just pause the video, take a screenshot with your phone if you need to. Take a screenshot if you're on a computer and use that as your <laughs> picture you need. But the damage dealers, three to four of them if you can. Just pick them. You don't have to gear them yet. Just try to get your idea of what you want. Next up, counter pick characters. Try to pick at least two of them. Try to see if you have two of them. And the thing is damage dealers kind of just work in the counter pick thing too. So maybe you want to build four or five damage dealers out of here. Maybe you can skip the counter pick part for now. But just try to make sure you have at least four to five total damage dealers for when you get into drafting. In case your opponent takes one or two of yours, you still have a couple other options. Now, tanks. Most people's common tanks as a new player are going to be Unbound Knight, Airwell, and Crimson Armin. That's fine. If you want to experiment some other ones, Christie's not bad. She's a specially changed character. Raz, if you have to. Raz isn't the worst. But these are the kind of characters you could do. All right. All of them are fantastic. Dragon Bright Sunny is amazing. If you happen to get her, congrats. I am jealous. Next up, Cleansers. Infinite Horizon and Katie's. If you got the ML4 star, she is my number one pick for new players. She will create a situation where you can learn the game amazing. It's really, really nice. Meteor Kyrk is coming back in the meta. I think next after next month in the Bounce Bash, Meteor Kyrk is going to be way back up again. I don't think it'll be... It'll probably be picked twice as much as he is now. So he's not picked too much now, but I think his use case is going to be way, way up next month because of all the things that come out that immunity would help against. So he's an immunity giver. Any character that gives immunity, same with Death or Desert Jewel Bazaar, he gives immunity and Comrades pushes and cleanses. Fantastic. But Infinite Horizon and Katie's for new players, if you have her, I will be playing her on every single account because I think she's just one of the best characters to use because she's kind of like a high skill character meaning that you have a bunch of options when playing her to try to learn and do different do different things throughout a game okay you'll see once we get into playing her but she full cleanses gives random debuffs combat just pushes herself up she's really good into moonlight luna there's a lot of things this character will provide for you as a new player now destina fantastic character as well i think for a new player you'll be able to use her really really well and i will be building her and using her so those of you that followed me and took Destina in the beginning i'll try out a player she's still great for arena she's still great for guild wars and for RTA, though, she will fall off eventually as you climb. But at the beginning, you'll definitely get used out of her. Next up, your supports. Number one pick for support is Abigail. Hopefully, you guys picked Death Through the Ray as well. I will be first picking Death Through the Ray probably every game. It is way too strong not to first pick. If you want with a different character, hopefully, you can get that character built up. And then you'll kind of see, uh, based off how I draft, how you could adjust your draft. All right, we get into it. But Abigail, so, so good. Number one number one pick. Make sure if you can build a Moon Bunny. It doesn't have to be fast. My Moon Bunny I was using on the challenge account was like 210. I think, I think she's like 210 speed. That was all it needed. And then from here, all these other characters are great. Now, the disruptors and debuffers. So with uh, cleansers, try to at least get one of them built. If you if you do have Infinite Horizon and just have your Destina and your Infinite Horizon and If you don't have her, build Meteor Calc maybe. Or you can experiment with one of these. Not, not bad. Support characters though any of these you have and also if you have other characters you think would be good for supports i didn't put many on here there's a bunch of characters in the game if you see something you like maybe test it out or ask ask be like is this a potential use case that's again the fun of epic seven try to come up with stuff cook like be a cook come up look read a skill and be like i could use this here i think and sometimes it'll work a lot of times it won't but when it does work it's one of the best feelings because you came up with the idea next up we have our disruptors debuffers try to get two of these built uh, you're going to have Celine if you've been following the guide. Hopefully you have Angel of Angelica or Moon Bunny. Those are both great. If you pulled on Lena, she's fantastic. And then from there, you're going to have Death of the Ray. But any of these other characters would be fantastic. Politus, hopefully you have Politus. She's way up there at the top as one of the disrupting characters. But any of these would be okay. The, this Bloomy Lydica is kind of hard to gear, but Bloomy Lydica with Harsetti 
could be great. So depending on your characters, if you have hard set, you may go and do a completely different strategy than me, but I'll at least hopefully be able to explain it as, as like over the next few videos. Okay, and then from there, that's it. So again, I'll put this back up on the screen and go and try to pick out your characters, come up with the list and see what you're looking like. I'm gonna go ahead and start working on my, my account. They're gonna be showing you guys how to get it, the guide account. So part 11 is going to be probably an hour long just going to warn you now, maybe longer, but it's going to be me going and crafting and building up this roster while trying to keep my PV in place. Then episode 12, will be playing RTA, teaching you guys like a first RTA session. Episode 13, will be then going back and clearing more of the PV things. I will be giving you mostly just other people's guides as to things you can go and follow and try to do to beat those higher abyss stages and things like that, because I don't want to do them. I beat Abyss so many times. I don't want to sit through that again, but I will give you the guides that I think are good that you can go follow to beat it. Now, I may have to make certain guides, I understand, but if I can use other content creators' resources that you guys could use, it helps them as a content creator. It helps me because I don't have to go do it. <laughs> but then we'll be getting to Hell Raid. Hell Raid is the last thing I have for the guide series. So that is the current plan. Thanks for watching. Swimmature Deity. I will see you all in the next portion. I'm going to go start working on it right now.